are living in a very serious time in terms of the educational landscape. And the theme for the conference is definitely in line. Building resilience for sustainable development in disruptive times. The big question why disruptive times is included in, this, in, the, in the conference theme. Well, the reality is that we're living in the period of the fourth industrial revolution. Some may believe that we are at the fifth industrial revolution, but I want to say that Jamaica is heading into the fourth industrial revolution. <laughs> So the overview for the presentation um, is as follows. Um, I'm going to look into the literature review and then we're going to the research questions. Now, vocational education is critical for economic development. And industry is expecting that higher education is preparing students who can meet the demands. Of, the, of this industrial, industrial revolution. Sometimes you may hear the term IR, is industrial revolution, or industry 4.0, they are used interchangeably in the presentation. Now, TVET system must be flexible and adaptive to the rate of digital transformation. And based on the ILO report 2020, which is quite recent, um, there are Three, in terms of the future skills that are required, there is a three-prong approach. The anticipation of skill needs, um, definitely we need to know what are the future skills. We are still trying to learn those as well. <laughs> um, but we need to prepare for them. Um, teaching of transversal or generic skills and improving the responsiveness of education system to emerging trends. This is of primary focus. And we have to ask the question, is Latin America um, countries and the higher education institutions, are, are we responsive to the emerging trends? And if not, what can we do um, in terms of strategies? Well, in terms of an overview of the, of the four industrial revolutions, um, we definitely start from 1785. And during that time, a lot of the crisis that, you know, in terms of automation, in especially in the automotive industry and, and mechanization, it was very difficult for some persons to adapt. But notwithstanding, for those who have adapted and shortly adapted, their economic situation have improved significantly. We can all agree on that. Mm -hmm. And so, in terms of the Industrial Revolution 4, that uh, we are at that you know, end where we need to look at the benefits and of, of adapting to some of these technologies and utilizing them in our process. So the fourth industrial revolution will bring opportunities. Notwithstanding those opportunities, there will be challenges that we can navigate and work through. And countries within the Latin American countries, of course, and beyond, there is, we need to look at how we can adapt and we can mitigate some of the challenges and issues and what are the strengths and weaknesses and how we can actually learn. So in terms of the research question, there are two. And the first one, is there a positive relationship between countries that are embracing or that have embraced Industry 4.0 and their overall GCI ranking, and that is Global Competitive Index? And the second one is, what is the probability of success for implementing Industry 4.0 in selected Latin American countries. Now, globalization and the fourth industrial revolution have created new opportunities and also disruption within and between economics and societies. There are new opportunities that have been created out of the disruption in all sectors. And of course, we need to do more in terms of learning those. Now, the Global Competitive Index um, provides a yardstick for policymakers to look beyond short term and reactionary measures and to instead ac assess their progress against the full set of factors that determine productivity. So, the World Economic um, Forum would have um, a list of these 12 pillars. So, with these 12 pillars, 
um, this is what, what we should use as a benchmark to assess what we are doing because the country, when we look at competitiveness in terms of our growth and all of that, this is what is, is being used as a yardstick. So any discussion without the use of these is going to be limited. All right, so there are 12 pillars and further in the presentation, I'm going to select five of those pillars and show how these are relevant in terms of uh, Industry 4.0 strategy that we can actually utilize going forward. More efforts should aim to raising social awareness about the impact of Industry 4.0. Even though we don't produce the technology and we are end users, it is still relevant for us. At least I probably need to correct that because we have persons from Jamaica are developing applications that are contributing to the technology and its use. Um, so we may not be the main producers, but we are end users in a large sense. Now, implementing significant transformation in instructional programs and the curriculum um, would definitely be important. This is a gap that we need to close in terms of, we are talking about Industry 4.0, but is our curriculum you know, modify to increase some of these pillars and um, principles. Probably a few, but have, have we decided on a strategy how we're going to, you know, incorporate um, Industry 4.0 principles so that we can better prepare um, students who, who are needed by the different industries to function. So there are future skills that are required for the TVET. Some must, some should, and some could. Just, I just want to emphasize in terms of there are two categories, technical and person, personal. Uh, so for the technical, we are seeing IT knowledge and abilities. This is a must. And we also abilities to interact with modern uh, interfaces. All right? And some of those modern interfaces are not you know, limited to just you know, passive um, devices, but even ro robotics and artificial intelligence and, you know, virtual reality, all of those things we should be able to deal with and include at some point in our curriculum. So higher education is considered one of the key drivers of growth, performance, prosperity, and competitiveness in national and global economies. So this is why we have to focus on ensuring that you know, higher education get all the support it needs in order to, um, you know, be able to equip the human capital for, for prosperity and competitiveness. So higher education can increase skills in knowledge as well in, in terms of the, the fourth industrial revolution. Now, this is very important um, from the research we have seen, I've seen that the main drivers of innovation in TVET is Industry 4.0. <laughs> so in other words, our TVET that we're offering without in the inclusion of Industry 4.0, not theory, I'm are limited to theory, but in terms of the infrastructure, then we are going to be in, in serious problem. So if we want to drive the economic growth and higher education as the vehicle, then we need to invest in terms of you know, acquiring the infrastructure to support um, TVET, Industry 4.0. Um, there are several technologies, and we can decide on a strategy of what technologies we're going to, you know, a phase by phase, because we know this is, this is a cost. Now, there's a big question in terms of traditional TVET. Where can I get employed after my training? We need to get away from that concept, you know? The big question now is how can I become an innovator of business opportunities after my training? So this is where the TVET needs to go into it, building those business skills, entrepreneurial skill set. So when a person lives with you know, excellent electrical, welding, ICT, all of those skill set, instead of just merely seeking employment, they could create employment. You know, gone are the days when we usually encourage persons, you know, a furniture maker could make their cupboards and all of those things. We need to reach that stage, you know, that person start to develop their own business rather than depending upon someone to employ them. You become an employer. Uh, TVET stakeholders need to map a, a, a model for ensuring successful integration of entrepreneurial education in TVET um, programs. So the key stakeholders, we know we have the government, we have the industry, 
um, the students, you know, all of these stakeholders need to set what map, how can we map a strategy um, for, for innovation in TVET. And the model should, of course, include the pedagogical content knowledge. Um, and this is really skills to contextualize and personalize the content. So whatever the instructor is presenting, they should be intimate with the content. So when you explain it, they can draw on their own personal experience to share to make it far more meaningful. In spite of a lot of luck, in, in, in spite of a lot of relevant skills, um, so the skills that are being taught, yeah, they are very relevant and industry need them because industry, we have to collaborate into, to determine what standards we need to offer and all of that. Um, but there is some challenges in terms of innovation, access to credit, you know, how can you get funding, you know, technical support and access to technology and information. So those are areas um, that the research has shown still remain uh, main impediments to grow and sustain um, TVET. So definitely we need to look at access, you know, higher education financing and supporting for these things need to be a main player. Now the curriculum for um, Industry 4.0 must, of course, include independent learning and self-management, that is a main area, multiple disciplinary, um, multiple disciplinary learning orientation, so gone are the days where just focusing and just hands-on, <laughs> you are, you know, we are training someone that should have a certain profile and include all of the skills, um, whether we want to call them soft skills or <laughs> but you should be able to function in a team, right? And be able to achieve stuff. So these are other skills and a con consciousness of social responsibility, you know, that is critical also involving, you know, you know, different committees and support what is happening in the wider society. Now the curriculum, of course, must involve um, virtual labs. This is something that we need to look at, educational robots. We are seeing the police force um, have included robots as well. And this is not a new concept because even Dubai, uh, from around 2019, they have actually, in the tourism sector, included robots. Um, so, with, so, you know, we have video and all of that, you know, um, facial sensors and all of that. So, so these are important things that should be included in the curriculum. What are the skills that are needed? In technical competence, there's no substitute for that. We need to have the right uh, methodological competences. The CBET methodology must be understood, um, and there must be an integration with some of the principles. In other words, we need to reach a point where we need to develop new teaching strategies for Industry 4.0. Can we continue to use the same old teaching strategies? You know, that is something that we need to look at, and personal competence and so on. Well, some of the main benefits, you know, innovation is by itself. Whatever we are doing, if we are not innovative, then we're not going to be competitive. And so in, including Industry 4.0 will help us to be more um, innovative. And of course, the customer satisfaction, we need to work on that as well. All right, so what are some of the challenges? High initial costs. So the financing issue, uh, initial cost, is something that we need to look at. Um, we can ask digital education, digital literacy. I can boast and say at the vocational training development, we actually offer digital literacy free of cost, actually under the present arrangement, <laughs> because we want to contribute to that digital transformation of Jamaica. All right, um, probably that is something we may have to see if, how we can continue with some funding. Um, I'm happy that Professor is here, can give us some support so we can continue to contribute, right? <laughs> of course, we have barriers. Now, it's interesting, um, there was this Malaysian, Malaysian study that I've came across um, that looked at 59 directors and what they have found out, some of the barriers, these directors would have managed different TVET institutions, and so what are some of the bar barriers to incorporating industry, or uh, integrate industry 4.0? And there are two main barriers that came out. One of the first one is TVET institution industry collaboration barriers. 
Um, and it's interesting that this is a barrier because TVET is built on the fact that there is a, you know, a strong <laughs> collaboration between industry and, and, and academia and all of that. Make sure whatever we're offering is, is in, the feedback from industry is essential. Now we are seeing now we cannot take it for granted that there are governance issues, funding and financial issues, management issues in collaboration. And, and so we can't take it for granted because we have MOUs and all of that, that they will just automatically work. We have to do something. So that's a barrier and that's something that we have to manage. There's also the issue of managerial skill barriers. And there are three different areas, technical managers unable to put the knowledge um, into practice um, due to experience as well and conceptual um, in terms of developing a long-term plan um, and this understanding the structure of the different society, um, sectors. So let us say in Jamaica we have the goods producing and we also have the industry. So even though when we are preparing our students we have to consider what are their structure, what level we are preparing them for and to make sure that the curriculum is relevant. Um, and also this is critical, um, human skill in terms of ability to manage relationship bet um, between organization, and this is a very new, just came out this month. <laughs> so we cannot take it for granted that those things, all right? Um, all right, so the, this research would have involved um, desktop um, strategy, as well as, you know, I'm going to be using some descriptive statistics and co correlation to look at um, some of the findings. So there are five pillars that have been chosen in order to examine how these pillars can contribute to how they affect the industry 4.0 sustainability. Um, so from this table, we are seeing um, the infrastructure. Um, we know JPS, of course, and you know, electricity supply quality is critical for industry 4.0. And um, in, internet use percent of adult population, we want to increase that. Um, companies, digital skill among active population, so this is a component from Pillar 6 and Pillar 11, business dynamism, companies embracing disruptive ideas. This is the foundation where Industry 4.0 would relate in terms of the pillar. So this is something that is measured. And if this is measured by um, the World Economic Forum and discuss, then that is something that we need to focus on, innovation capability. The research and development expenditure, we are just, you know, merely in 2019, 0.1% um, of GD, GB, um, the GDP. Um, that's the average across in terms of the Latin American country. And we have to do more in terms of research and development and ensure that what our research are not just, um, we just discuss them and, you know, we need to commercialize it. So, all right, so the definition, simplify, um, Industry 4.0 is the realization of the digital transformation, and that is what we need to focus on. How are we going to do that? All right, this is quite interested in terms of the quality of vocational training in Latin American country. I am happy to report <laughs> that Jamaica is actually ranked fourth. Um, I think you should be clapping. So what, what does that mean? It means that... There is debate in terms of what Hart is doing, and of course there are areas to improve. Um, we know there is the contribution of VTDI to the Hart agenda. We also know UTEC, um, CAS, um, we know all of these areas, um, UWE, you know, but Jamaica, if Jamaica is placed fourth out of 22 countries where data was available, because Cuba is not in, in, in this. It means basically, if we really see us, we can actually lead Latin American country. I mean, sorry for about the other country, you know. <laughs> I'm a Jamaican, so I'm a little biased there. So I'm just saying, we are placed fourth and actually 36th in the world in terms of the quality of vacation education. When I saw that, I was like, this is something to be proud about. We are not doing too bad. And if we actually do 5% improvement, we. we you know how far it would be? We're actually fourth. I, I want to challenge the audience here. Let us work together, collaborate to make Jamaica the first in the Latin American country. We can do it. Yes, we can do it. We, need, we have the backbone. Jam we can do it. <laughs> and those from other countries, you can help us to do it. Because by helping us, you will help yourself to come closer as well. All right. So. 
actually, when you actually look at the data, so there are five areas that I believe that will influence, you know, um, Industry 4.0 integration, and these areas are highlighted, and we are seeing um, the overall ranking in terms of um, we are having Chile being first place, um, and we have Chile, Trinidad is actually doing well in terms of the ICT pillow. Um, is actually fourth here, and, we're, and, and, and Jamaica is actually second in terms of the entrepreneurial culture in Latin American country. Yes. So we are, there are areas that we are doing well, and we are a comparison of the, of the first 20 countries. Um, it's interested, I'm going to show you a graph, and you're going to, it's interested that when you compare the first 20 countries in terms of the overall global GCI, the Global Competitive Index, and in terms of their, in terms of the com of countries, co countries that have companies that have embraced digital, um, we are seeing basically that there's a positive correlations. So the more we embrace the industrial 4.0, what it means that it will increase our ranking because we are going to put in those technology that are going to contribute to the human capital increasing and economic improvement. I mean, when I saw, I, that's quite interesting. So I said, all right, those are the first 20 countries. So let us, so when I compare the Latin American countries and their overall ranking, we are seeing that there is a what? R square is showing that there is a positive um, correlation. So we are seeing that the industrial, rev, industrial revolution, the fourth industrial revolution, by embracing it more, we put ourselves on a trajectory to greater economic success. So this is something that we can rally around. All right? Um, and so I had to do the, you know, those statistics, do the tests, basically, to make sure that there is um, normality with the data before I could actually run some of these tests. So I've been identified. We, the correlation, so these are the graphs that show, and both graphs actually show that they are, there is, there is a, a, a moderate positive correlation. So it's not a very high, but it's a moderate. And so both of, in terms of embracing um, industrial revolution, for the fourth industrial revolution, our principles into the economic and so on. And so this is something that we can all happy about. These are the results um, of it. Um, I'm coming down here. I also decided to do a mo um, look at this, a multiple correlation analysis, and the five factors that have been selected. And we are seeing basically there is a five in terms of the F statistics. This is actually 0 0.0020, which is less than 0 0.05. In other words, it's less than 5%, which actually show you that this, there is a positive you know, relationship, and this model, there is actually the best adjusted R square is telling us that there are 58, 55.7% chance, or approximately 56%, that this model is actually um, predicting the strength of the relationship. Um, interestingly, none of these factors are actually showing um, their p-value is actually less. So what I, because this was actually run on a 10% 10 margin, 10 margin of error. So I'm going to actually do the 15%, which is the maximum, to see if any of these will actually stand out. So none is directly telling us we should stand out. But overall, I'm it's interested that there is this um, model. All right, so in conclusion, yes, it's final, in conclusion. <laughs> There is a positive correlation between countries. This is what I wanted to leave from here with. There is a positive correlation between countries that have embraced Industry 4.0 with respect to their global competitive index. The major barriers affecting the implementation um, outweighs the benefit. The benefits outweigh the barriers. And the probability of success that is calculated um, is between 32% to 64%. And if there is a 50 Six percent chance there. Um, what are the recommendations? Greater R and D investment for applied research. So this is something here. Greater public awareness of the benefits, and interestingly, increased investment. There is no substitute to that. I end by saying that during 1970, 
there was Jamaica, in Jamaica actually, um, the ILO, the government of Jamaica and UNESCO decide that vocational education need to streamline, hence the birth of VTDI. And, this, and then we have all of the success story coming through collaboration with Ministry with Heart and all of that. If we decide to collaborate like that, I'm sure our economic development will be greater in the future. Thank you.